Hi there, I'm Eli Sipka, and this is the Patros Review. Now this is the sixth of a series of reviews where I revisit the Monogram 9, the infamous series of ultra-cheap poverty road horror thrillers, and a couple of comedies thrown as well. The Bela Lugosi did has a nine-picture deal Monogram, the cheapest of the poverty road studios of the 1940s, after producer Sam Katzman signed them on following the 1939 Edgar Wallace adaptation The Dark Eyes of London, which was also known as The Human Monster. Monogram uh, did the distribution deal of that in America, it was made by a British studio. Now these films ran from 1941 to 1944. I've decided to review these films each separately, as it is easier for fans to look up these films, and also to go a little more in depth on each film. So let's start, shall we? Now in this, in this episode we take a look at the sixth film in that series, The Ape Man. This was directed by William One-Shot Bodine. Yeah, the infamous One-Shot. <laughs> He actually directed three films in this series, and it was written by uh, Barney A. Sarecki, which was based on the story They Creep in the Dark by Carl Brown. Of course, it was produced by Jack Dietz and Sam Katzman, and the cast include Bela Lugosi, Louise Curry, Wallace Ford, Henry Hall, Minerva Urikal, Emil Van Horn, and J. Farrell MacDonald. Now, in this end to the Monogram 9's middle trilogy, there are three more to go. Bela Lugosi plays an ill-lucked scientist named James Brewster. Why is he ill-lucked, do you say? Well, in his research into hormone gland therapy, or something along those lines, do the dodgy science in these 94s cheapies tends to be something of an utter joke. He has made some discoveries that could potentially benefit humanity, or at the very least give the US Army something of an edge in the war going on at the time. But in trying to prove his discoveries, he accidentally injects himself with hormones taken from a captive gorilla he keeps in a cage still in his basement causing to transform into a human-gorilla hybrid. Of course, with a film that uses an actor in a cheap and hilariously unconvincing Hollywood gorilla suit to play the gorilla, the effects here simply equate to Lugosi having yak hair glued onto his cheeks and a pretty bad wig on his head. And no, they did not use gorilla glue. Despite being a gorilla-human hybrid, Brewster still has most of his intelligence intact and enough sense to spend half his days stuck in the cage cell of his captive gorilla friend, so he spends his remaining time trying to figure out an antidote into reversing his transformation. He eventually figures out that human spinal fluid can be crucial to getting him back to his old human self, but the only downside of that is that he needs to kill his victims to harvest the spinal fluid. Brewster tries to find an ethical way of the sort of stuff he needs, but when the pesky snooping reporter interferes in his quest, things start to go horribly wrong. Now you gotta feel sorry for poor old Bella. By this point he was pretty much accepting any job he can get in order to get the drug money he is desperately needed for his raging addiction to morphine, and some other stuff as well. A popular rumor these days claims that Lugosi was apparently quaffing formaldehyde. Huh. <laughs> because it's the only stuff that's still had an effect on him. Poor bastard. Here in the sixth film from Monogram, he becomes a sort of werewolf, or were ape to be precise. Now, as for the science portrayed here, either our medical science has evolved significantly since the days of the early 1940s, which my money's on, or the people back then simply didn't know sweet fuck all about the, about the what they were doing. Of course, some didn't know a fair bit of fuck all given that penicillin, the original antibiotic, was invented around this time period, which ended up saving countless lives of then and since, judging by what happens here. This was the first film in the Monogram 9 to be directed by legendary hack director William Oneshot Bodine, who got his nickname for his habit of only needing a single take for each scene. Thus saving the studios he worked for a lot of time and money, at a trade off for quality. This is the same guy who gave the world the two western horror schlockers Billy the Kid vs Dracula and Jesse James meets Frankenstein's daughter, his two final films, and he reportedly did more than 250 films, many of which were from the silent era. The lack of polish due to Bodine's style went a fair way to rendering whatever negligible atmosphere this film might have had, potentially, to be practically cancelled out, which just was only a really crappy film, and a strange fourth wall breaking mysterious character who shows up from time to time predicting events just about to happen with an unerring accuracy, who in the film's final moments reveals himself to be the film's writer. Is that you, Mr. Sarecki? Cracking up the car's window with the words The End painted on it, it's probably the strangest thing I've ever seen in a 1940s movie. This film doesn't seem to have been taken seriously at all by the production crew, and I suggest you don't either. So that make makes me give The Ape Man a D, 2 out of 10 grade, making it sit on the bottom 3 of the Monogram 9's ranking list. If you're a bad movie masochist in the mood for a laugh, this might fit the bill, but otherwise it's pretty damn bad stuff. Now, there's no gore and nudity in this. Now, this film, like the rest of the Monogram 9, is in the public domain, has been for decades. And finding copies of it can be a little tricky at times, but should be fairly easy if you know where to look. 
This can be found on old VHS tapes, those dirt cheap public domain operated DVDs, internet public domain movie download sites, some of which can be willing to pass you some malware if you're not careful, and of course on YouTube, which I've, where I've watched my copy. Okay, so the 8-man gets a D, 2 out of 10. It's bad. Not terrible, but just bad. Okay. Now, that's it for that review. If you have any questions about films or DVDs in general, just hit me on the com comment section and I'll be happy to answer. Hope you guys are staying safe. Take it easy. That's it for this review. See ya.